As fascism spread like a plague throughout Europe, many famous scientists like Fermi, Einstein, and Beta fled to America to escape persecution. These scientists, along with many others throughout the world, understood the principle of nuclear fission. The equation E is equal mc square, in which energy is put equal to mass multiplied with the square of the velocity of light, showed that very small amount of mass may be converted into a very large amount of energy. As early as 1934, artificial radioactivity was discovered by Giulio Curie and examined by Enrico Fermi. Hahn and Strassmann in 1938 proved what Fermi had seen, and they published a paper internationally which described atomic fission. A year later, Frisch and Meitner described the mechanism for fission, and the chain reaction was confirmed. All this information was shared at an international physics conference in Washington. There was no doubt now that several countries were working to build a fission bomb. Nazi Germany might be nearing completion of its own atomic bomb. Several scientists drafted a letter signed by Albert Einstein to President Roosevelt requesting governmental support of fission research. Some recent work by E. Fermi and L. Szilard leads me to expect that the element uranium may be turned into a new source of energy. This new phenomenon would lead to the construction of bombs. A single bomb of this type might well destroy a whole port with some of the surrounding territory. I understand that Germany has actually stopped the sale of uranium from the Czechoslovakian mines. That she should have taken such early action might perhaps be understood on the ground that the son of the German Undersecretary of State, von Weizsäcker, is attached to the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin. Researchers in many American universities continued investigating the atom while waiting for a reply to their letter. One such scientist was Enrico Fermi. On a squash court under a football stadium in the heart of Chicago, Fermi and his scientific colleagues achieved the first successful chain reaction December 2nd, 1942. This feat prompted swift political response. President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill decided to consolidate their research efforts in the United States. Colonel Leslie Groves, the military officer who had been in charge of the construction of the Pentagon, was chosen to head the scientific enterprise called the Manhattan Engineering District. One of the laboratories in this project, called Site Y, was located on a mesa in the Jemez Mountains of New Mexico. Robert Oppenheimer, a quiet, thin physicist, was the civilian leader appointed to head the scientific endeavor at Site Y. He was a brilliant but frail man, the son of a wealthy New York textile importer. He was a professor of physics at two universities in California, but he was recruited to this post. Robert Oppenheimer was the driving force behind the people at Site Y who were given the task of creating an atomic bomb. The site chosen for the project had been a boys ranch school, an exclusive school for sons of wealthy parents. Secretary of War Henry Stimson sent a letter to the school's headmaster, A.J. Connell, saying, It has been determined necessary that the Los Alamos Ranch School be acquired for military purposes. It is requested that you refrain from making the reasons for the closing of the school known to the public at large. Site Y, or Los Alamos, quickly became a bustling scientific war factory. Scientists from all parts of the United States and England came here and disappeared from the world. People worked feverishly, spurred by the intensity of the war and the fear that Germany might accomplish the task first. They worked six days a week and often late into the night. Their enthusiasm, idealism, and excitement over the importance of the work being done was not dampened by the difficulties encountered daily. There were problems with pre-detonation and simultaneous high explosive detonation. Methods of handling and machining radioactive materials had to be established. High explosives had to be cast and shaped. The problems encountered while developing the bomb had never been experienced before.
there was almost a race between the availability of the material and the availability of the necessary professional technical skill. In the spring of 1945, men began disappearing into the desert to Trinity site, 200 miles south of Los Alamos. Finally, one stormy evening at Trinity, the bomb was hoisted into the tower. Excitement mounted. Would the bomb, which had consumed continuous attention of so many brilliant people for nearly two years, prove successful? Three, two, one, no. Atomic scientists from all over the world had joined together in a common cause, to build a weapon that would end a war, and they succeeded. The job done, many of the scientists went home to resume the lives they had left two years earlier. A few scientists, like the laboratory's second director, Dr. Norris Bradbury, remained, realizing that a new job, a scientific revolution, had just begun. Thank you.